Right, so as you can see, that this is absolutely crazy. And uh, it, there's no real way of just opening it because Intel think they're funny while making something like this. As you can see, really hard. But what I have noticed is that there is an arrow. Where's the arrow? Uh, there it is, there's an arrow there. And I'm wondering if that's how you open it. Does anyone know how to open this? This would be good. It's really creaky. But yeah, I do not know how to open this shit. But I am going to because we need to build this. Is it like this? Is it like you pull it? <laughs> oh, it's not near enough impossible. Just get the OEM version, it's easier. So today is the day that we actually build the 9900K Superior Beast computer. Well, it's only superior for a little while. But this is the fastest gaming computer that you can buy right now. It's going to be with, obviously, the Asus ROG Strix 11GB card. This is a 2080 Ti. So we've got that. That's going in there. Then the Ryogen 240 AIO cooler. Hopefully, it will be able to keep it cool. Now, talking about that, it's got Notchua fans in there, and I didn't have any Notchua fans. I forgot to even speak to Notchua. I've got different Notchua fans, and they're right over there, but they're all different sizes. They didn't give me like a set, which I was like, oh my god, I thought they gave me a set. But then I showed you Notchua, not Notchua, Black Noise, Noise Blocker fans the other day in a couple of videos, I think. And uh, I was going to use the white ones, but these are nicer because they'll go with this aesthetic. And I'm trying to keep everything a bit minimal of the RGB because. This has got an OLED screen with RGB, then the power supply has got RGB with an OLED screen, the graphics card's got RGB, and the motherboard's got RGB. So I was gonna put thermal take RGB fans in there, and I opted not to, because you could have them as voice activation, all that sort of stuff, it would have been quite cool. Maybe in another later video, but I need performance, and I need cooling, and I need quietness. So I went, opted for the noise blocker, black, well the black noise, noise blocker fans, which are right here, and these are the PSB12s. And they're 120mm fans, then obviously an NVMe, two ter uh, one terabyte Samsung Pro 970 or 970 Pro uh, NVMD, well, M.2, that'll do. 32 gigabytes of Trident memory. Now, this is clocked at 4266 megahertz, and this is 32 gigabit, uh, not kit, because it's 16 bit, 16 gigabyte kit, and 16 gigabyte kit. But the, uh, it was a bit of a mission. That was obviously in a story that I was talking about how it was so hard to get these and everything like that. People have asked me, why have you gone for this sort of clock speed? It's because it kind of makes it future proof, unless. DDR5 comes out and then it's like it's not future proof anymore but it depends on the latency speeds. The latency speeds are okay on this plus these are world record uh, overclockers as well up to 5155 megahertz or something like that. Plus you can overclock this motherboard which is the MSI godlike motherboard here and I should be able to overclock it to like 4600 overclocked but I doubt it. It's probably going to be more like 2066 and then it's just gonna just be what it is. Nah, it will it will be overclocked. I'm gonna be overclocking this, be overclocking uh, the graphics card, and I'll be overclocking the CPU. And it's talking about the CPU is the 
I, the Cora 9900K, which is obviously just the winner right now. And um, we're gonna be using that, overclocking it. But we're gonna be starting off with obviously CPU air cooling, uh, no, AIO cooling. Then we're gonna go back and get a couple of CPUs, air coolers, and then stick them on the 9900K, see how that goes. And then afterwards, the final one, it's obviously gonna be like custom water cooling because we want the, the proper performance and the cooling and we want it for gaming, stroke, a bit of a workstation because it is a bit of a beast, obviously with the CUDA cores. And when ray tracing comes out for the games and it switches on, um, everything's going to have to be cooler because I think Ray Tracer is going to make the graphics cards hot. But then again, loads of things have been failing. This graphics card could be dead on, anything could be dead on arrival here. Normally what you should do is test everything outside the case and then put it inside the case. But I don't mind because at the end of the day I'm just doing this video for you lot. It's no skin off my nose. It's like five grand's worth here and it doesn't really matter. It's just like I want to make sure that you don't make the same mistakes. If I make mistakes in this video, it will be because obviously this is very expensive. We should have waited. But if I wait, then you can't tell what the temperatures are, if it's worth purchasing. Just like the RTX 2080 Ti, they've been dead on arrival. Some have been all right, some have been not, not all right, but not the Strix one. I don't know if that graphics card's had a problem. It's been the Nvidia side of things, had reference boards on the actual graphics cards and a few uh, partners have had a few problems, but I haven't had any problems about this one. Plus it normally stacks up pretty well, and it's got decent cooling, it's meant to be quiet. But we're not gonna know this until we obviously build it, it? Anyway, we've got the 240, and that's got the black, um, that's got the notch with fans in there. So we've got the best fans in the world. We've got noise blocker, um, black noise fans, and then we've got notch fans. Those are the best, those are the best fans in the world. As simple as that. And then we've got the, this, the ROG4 power supply, 850 watt. Now, I'm telling you, from now, I knew it wasn't worth it with this build because I'm not gonna be able to see it in this case, but I'm gonna be probably changing it depending on how the cooling is. But so far, I've, I've seen this case and it's had decent cooling and it's got good craftsmanship, so we've just gotta give it a go. Anyway, Toshiba said, um, well, they're sending over their new NVMEs and they're, they're like the smaller ones, uh, 240 gigs each. So I'm not gonna bother putting SSDs in it. I'm just gonna literally have everything that's NVMe, the fastest of the fast. And obviously I've got a terabyte of the fastest of the fast 970 Samsung Pro. So let's get on and build this computer. And by the way, this is uh, not easy to take apart. This is pretty long. Anyway, what we could do, well, I'm gonna slow it down in certain aspects. So you can, if you wanna build with me, you can build this computer. But I'm not going to talk in it, I'm just going to make sure that you kind of understand where things are going if you want to build this kind of computer. And if not, just enjoy the cinematics. Anyway, let's, let's get on with it. Right, first off, obviously have a nice, nice uh, place to work in on the table. That makes a lot of sense. Um, I haven't got a screwdriver, I've got um, my trusty Swift army knife and um, I'm going to be using it for this, I'm just joking. I'm not using that, me. I'm using a screwdriver. And sometimes we need to open packaging, you need that, but I've already opened the package, so it's all right. So let's start off with moving the motherboard to the one side quickly and getting this CPU out. is a back plate on there as well so I don't need to have a retention bracket what I do is I undo the retention bracket and lift it up and then lift up the cap leave the plastic on top make sure my hands are clean which they are and this CPU can only go in one way and I'm placing it straight face down and it fits in perfect like that and then I lift up the retention bracket and then the cap pop off. So I'm just checking at the back to see what speeds they are. And it looks like they're all eight times for the M.2. And then I'm gonna take off the plate. Now underneath, I do have a thermal pad, so I can, I'll take that off. So it's ready to go on there. And then this plastic bit as well on the funnel pad comes off. 
Wow, how much formal pad have they got on there? It's like they've got extra bits on there. So this is going to be my boot drive and a bit of Adobe and my games on it, because it's a terabyte one. And then my other one's just going to be when I'm just dragging and dropping. So you just place the M.2 inside there, make sure it slides in nicely. And there's a screw there, so I'll just pull this out for one second and hold it between my two hands like this. Then place my end up to there. And try not to get my screw trapped on the way. Then put back the plate. Now I'll have to put the memory in, which is I have got 32. Now, if you're gonna, if you only got two dims, you'll either place one in the first slot and then one and miss a slot and then put one there. But I can't, I just can't do it. I need to make sure it looks looks really nice. And I like this RAM. I think it's really nice. But anyway, open. Well, you don't need to open these ones. Oh, yes, that you do. I was gonna say most of these other motherboards, or some of them, you open both ends like how I just did then, and then that's how it works to undo it. Make sure you line up the holes with uh, the slot because it only goes in one way. And then you should hear it clip down and press both the two fingers like this. So that's in. And do the same for all the others. Right, next step would be to get the case and obviously your fans so you can put the AIO together. So here is the Ryogen or the Rob Ryogen with uh, industrial PPC by Notchua. And as you can see, there's thermal compound underneath there. You can wipe this off and completely clean it with some um, alcohol that or special formulated um, fluid that will clean off the copper plate and then obviously put your own thermal uh, compound onto the CPU and then obviously flatten it out by the pressure of the CPU air cooler. This one has got a fan in it so I think it's an 80 mil fan and it's meant to keep the cool, the phases and the chokes and the VRMs, that's what it's there for. And now I've got my fans here obviously, these are the Noctua fans. Um, they're kind of close, but it's better than just using something that just doesn't look right and I didn't want to use too much RGB and stuff. But these fans should be good. And then we've got all the brackets and stuff like this. Now I'm just going to take off the top, and this is the Debauer case, made by uh, Inwin, not Inwin, by Lian Lee, oh my god, and uh, this should be a nice one, so we've got the filter on there as well, that's the one way around, could be either way around I guess, this is so simple, so that's how you get the glass out. My motherboard might hang over a little bit because it's an extended motherboard. We've got two thumb screws here and then we've also got one here and this is where the cable management is going to go. There is some uh, cable points as well where you can tie and also grommet holes. Looks pretty cool. You can put um, an SSD or two SSDs on the back of here or one mechanical hard drive or a mechanical 2.5 inch hard drive or 3.5 inch hard drive and then uh, you can have that there or two SSDs in the front with no problems whatsoever. So... What we're going to do now is that my mob board's pretty huge, so it's probably got all the standoffs all in the right place. 
Um, I don't know what else you get in this, well, you get a book. So that's good with the little lead to tell you what to do with it. If you have any problems, you get a big rubber to rub things out. <laughs> now I, don't, I actually don't know what this is. It's quite thick, but I'll find out what it is. It's got 3M adhesive on the back, so I'm guessing it's for something to stand up on. Might be for walk I don't know. So I'll get my screws in there. Ah, oh, nice. Not crappy plastic Velcros. Don't need it yet, though. still should look fine. Now I would put all these screws in without a doubt because you technically don't want to have any static problems. Because sometimes you have problems where not all the screws are in the motherboard. I know it's stupid. Anyway, just don't over tighten them, just give them a little hand tighten. And that is it. Don't over tighten your motherboard. You could damage it. So before, what I'm going to do is orientate the AIO, so this is the right way where it says Republic Gamers, it's that way, and then obviously I'm going to mod Rage at it this way, and I want my fans so they look very smart. So yeah, I want my fans to be exhausting, so I want my cable to be routed this way so it goes through the actual grommets. So now I'm going to take my AIO out of the case, because I know I want it in this orientation. So I'm just gonna put these down here to the hole. attach this to the radiator, I already know this fits. I'll rest this on the side. Right. So you've got one screw there, and then we want one at the bottom. Keeps it safe, I'm gonna use a magnetic one. I think it's heavy enough, yep. to do is to put the retention bracket on which is that thing actually before I can even do that I need to remove this power supply so retention bracket this goes on here this is 1151 socket and it's got to find the hole so that's what it looks like from behind. And then, before I turn this around, then start putting down for the 11, the, oh, what is this, 11.36 and 11.51 screws. Now it's on there, put a little bit of pressure onto it, not too much, just enough to hold it on into place. And let's do the screws diagonally, as I said before. 
everything I want There must be a way I can make you see That if we fell in love, it would be so sweet But when it's you and me, me, me Nobody can bring us down, bring us down But I don't wanna stop if you love me Now you can make this look nice because it's a dangly cable and uh, it's a bit awkward. But I'm gonna just poke this straight through to the back. But you can obviously make it look nice and give it a little curl, like a little piggy tail, and it will look nice with this uh, build. Anyway, next what you do is put the cables that you need inside the power supply before you put the power supply in, even though you could do this afterwards because it looks pretty simple, no problem whatsoever. So this, um, he, but the, the bow is a bit of a nutcase and uh, he likes to use two uh, power supplies to overclock with because he's a nutter. But he's a good nutter. He's the original nutter. Uh, I don't know where the screws are. Oh, look at that. So now I'm just going to get the screws out the bag. Me, me. Screw these to the back because that's, that's what you do, you screw it to the back and make sure the power supply is facing outwards because it just saves on problems. So just collect the 24 pin in there. What I'm looking for, oh, I'm looking for it to make it look quite nice. So at the moment, I'm just going to do this as test mode. So to make sure everything's working, temperatures are good. So I don't have to send anything back. I don't really want to put it together, together if you know what I mean, where it's a bit too, too together. Right, so PCI through the hole, all these other cables just get out the way. And these are for the front of the case. Just tie them up there in the way. Oh, we're still here, flipping coins about what's to come. It starts getting cold, and we don't know. And then, obviously, just connect up your front of your case. So, if you've got this motherboard, maybe you've got an older motherboard, or you've just got like the 370, then make sure that you put the right EPS connector in and you should have no problems. But with this, this is uh, for overclocking with more stability. That's why there's two of them right now. On this case as well, find the fan header, the dual one, which is up here. So I'm plug that in. And there's the other one. Yeah, there's the other one. Plug them in and wrap them over the top. To be honest with you, I think I should really be wrapping them through here. Right now, I'm just going to plug the rest of the fronts in now. Last bit of uh, connecting these things up, other than the graphics card, is that I need to connect to the JFP1, which is my front header, to obviously make sure it works. Obviously I can use this if it's on a test bed and it can work. So that's the last thing you need to do to plug that in. And then, put your graphics card in.
So for me, I am just literally, before I do any cable combs or anything like that, I want to test everything. So I'm just putting everything back together. But I'm not really doing very like much nice cable management. But all this cable should feed into there really. But it should be alright. Like that's not too bad. I could hide these cables really nicely and stuff, but I want to actually tie them all up and make them look nice. But I want to check to make sure everything's working properly and then we'll be on our way. Right, last bit, graphics card. Right, so I want to obviously put the graphics card in the top slot because that's 16 times plus speed. All the rest are eight or four times. Well, this is a four times. And the other three PCR ones are uh, eight times and the top one six times. So I'm gonna obviously put it at the top here. Let's check in my room. It looks like I've got a good room. So now just take off the rubber um, bit on the bottom and then obviously remove how many slots it's gonna take up. Probably about three, maybe two. Now, to plug these in. Right, so you need to subscribe and share and like these videos if you like them, because uh, if you don't, you won't be kept up to date on what's happening next in this awesome, crazy build. Actually, I'm gonna take some plastic off while I'm here before you go, just to see what it looks like without breaking the glass. So that looks nice, take that off. I wanted to take this off ages ago, but I've been saving it for you lot. That looks really, really nice. I like that. Now, I need to take the plastic off the front. Off of here. Is there any plastic in there? Uh, I think there is. All right, let's take, oh, that's a big bit of plastic. Uh, Oh, stuck to me. Whoa, that is so nice. Oh, sparkly. Now, what? ah, I got electric shock, man. Last one. Well, there's actually one on the side of the case as well. Here's the other bit in the middle. Ah. And then, there should be another bit here. Oh, that was rubbish. Nice. Woohoo! <laughs> subscribe and share if you like to see the next video of the temps and obviously i'm going to be doing a review on the graphics card alone and i know it's a beast so i'm going to let you know and then obviously is this aio worth the 9900k that it's stuck onto and obviously g skill g skill memory 4,260 cents, is it really worth it? And obviously, the godlike MSI gaming motherboard with obviously godlike prices. But anyway, see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, Roger and out.